Deep Learning AI just published a new course in partnership with OpenAI, which are the makers of ChatGPT. And the short course is named ChatGPT Prompt Engineering for Developers. This course is only one hour long and it's pretty geared to beginners to advanced. You only need a little bit of Python knowledge to understand it. I just took the whole course and I think the course is fantastic. It's free for a limited time. So if you are interested in this topic, make sure you take it as soon as possible. I think you could easily split the course in two different sections. One is a section that uh, teaches you how to write proper prompts for ChatGPT. And that could be easily used even in the classic ChatGPT interface, either with GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. And the second part teaches you how to integrate ChatGPT in your own applications with the API. So here on the left, we had the outline of the whole course. So we have intro, guidelines, then several different sections on how to use ChatGPT. And at the end, we have a little section on how to build your own chatbot. The entire course uses GPT 3.5 Turbo which is the latest version of ChatGPT. So for each section on the right, we have a video which explains the principles. This video is anywhere from five to 20 minutes long. And on the left, we have a Jupyter Notebook where you can actually play with the code, which is super useful to really understand the concepts. The first section, guidelines, I think is the most uh, important and most useful for uh, general people who try to use ChatGPT. And the guidelines section is essentially split into two different principles. Principle one is, write clear and specific instructions. They also provide four different tactics. So tactic one, use the limiters to separate the text. Tactic two is ask for structured output, either an HTML or JSON uh, output. Tactic three is check whether conditions are satisfied, check assumptions required to do the task. So to make sure that the model doesn't hallucinate and uh, just kind of makes up answers for you. And tactic four is few shot prompting. So if you're looking for something specific, it's useful to give it an example of a uh, correct completion of a particular task. And then the model can kind of learn from that and give you a very similar response. Principle two is give the model time to think and they'll give you two different tactics. First tactic is specify the steps to complete the task. And tactic two is instruct the model to work out its own solution before rushing to a conclusion. Sometimes for complex problems, particularly math problems, it's too difficult for ChatGPT to go through the whole problem in one go. But if you kind of chop up the math problem into separate different steps that you want to accomplish, then it can usually provide you the correct solution. The second section talks about iteration and the teachers of the course highlight that it's very unlikely that you're gonna come up with the ideal prompt on your very first try. So it's really important to iterate. And the idea is that first you come up with an idea of a prompt, then you ask the model to respond. You kind of see what is the response, you analyze the result, and then you figure out what are the errors, what you would like to change, and you add or subtract from your original prompt. And if you go through this uh, cycle several times, you should be able to arrive with the best possible prompt. And they say a couple of times that list of perfect prompts doesn't really exist because everybody's application is a little bit different. And it's really important to kind of have a system on how to arrive at the proper prompt as opposed to just like some memorized prompt that you're gonna use every single time for every single scenario. The next section is summarizing. And I think we've seen a lot of these examples on the web already is that ChatGPT is very good at taking large amounts of text and distilling into kind of the major bullet points. And they have a really nice example here on how to integrate it into like an e-commerce platform. So for example, uh, here on the Jupyter Notebook, we have several, several reviews. All of these reviews are kind of long. And uh, here on the right, we have a, a video where they talk about how when you run the code, it can easily give you these summaries. So here is uh, the four different reviews and it gives you a summary of each of these review in like one or two sentences. And that's very useful if you uh, have a lot of uh, text to process, the API can do that really quickly for you and you can integrate into, into your own application. The next section is inferring. And what that means is that when uh, ChatGPT can take out your text and figure out what's the sentiment of the text or what are some type of labels that have been uh, mentioned. So in here, in this case, we have a lamp review, which is uh, uh, kind of a paragraph, several sentences. And uh, here in the video, they explain how ChatGPT can figure out the sentiment. So here it's, uh, it says positive. And this is particularly useful if you have a e-commerce platform and you're looking for reviews that are negative and when customers are very angry because you want to take care of your customers and maybe contact them with a person. So you can screen all the reviews that have been published on your site with uh, this um, uh, ChatGPT API and it will look for those reviews and flag those for human review, for example. The next section is transforming and this can do uh, several different ways to kind of transform your text into something different. Uh, the most common example is probably translating. ChatGPT can speak a lot of different languages, probably the best at English because most of the training data is in English, but you could try with your own language to see how good it is to translate between your 
your own native language and English. Another really common use of for chat GPT is to use for proofreading. And another common use case is to change the tone of the text. So let's say, for example, you write an email that's in an informal tone and you want to make it a little more formal because it's you're sending it to a professor, for example. So chat GPT can do that for you. Here, uh, they show you really impressive examples as far as the translation. So uh, uh, here there are different sentences uh, in lots of different languages. So you have original message uh, in French, in Spanish, in Italian, in Polish. And uh, ChatGPT is able to very easily identify uh, what the language is and then translate into English and then also translate into Korean. So super impressive. And this can be very powerful for e-commerce platforms that are multilingual. The last section about how to use chat GPT is called expanding. And I think this is the most common use case that you've seen on TV and YouTube videos is when you ask chat GPT to generate something novel, something new, let's say, uh, create a text like a poem in a style of Shakespeare or whatever. This is uh, something that's really impressive because it's creative. It's something that previous models were not able to do easily. I think there is definitely a danger uh, in chat GPT because expanding and summarizing are kind of polar opposites. And I think we can easily in the working world uh, get to a point where one person will be doing expanding of their text. So they type up some facts they need to send to a colleague uh, use ChatGPT to uh, create a very elaborate email. So they use the expanding function. And then the other colleague on the other side gets it. The email is too long and they'll use the summarizing function to distill it to something that's shorter and easier to digest. So that wouldn't be very efficient. Uh, people should just use the original text and send that without uh, any chat GPT involved. But in this expanding section, there was like a golden nugget hidden. Maybe this is common knowledge, but I actually haven't seen this. So they talk about, about, about temperature of the model. And this is something that's uh, baked into chat GPT. And it tells you how chat GPT will respond. Let's say, my favorite food is, and then the model will predict the most likely next word. And then there is this parameter temperature, which tells you how creative is the model or how precise is the model. So if temperature is zero, then it will tell you my favorite food is pizza because statistically pizza is the most favorite food. So in 53% of the time, pizza is the favorite food. So this would be like the most precise, most uncreative way to use the model. If you increase the temperature every now and then it gives you sushi because 30% of people would say sushi. And if you increase the temperature even more to like 0.7, the model will become a lot more creative and will give you uh, less common answers. So it will, sometimes it will give you sushi, sometimes it will give you tacos. And I think this is what's in the Bing uh, model. So when you go to uh, the Bing chat model, you can do uh, more balanced, more precise, more creative. So more precise is probably temperature equal to zero. More balanced is like probably temperature equal to 0.3 and more creative is uh, temperature equal to 0.7 or even higher. And from my testing in previous video, I really like the more creative mode by far the best. The more, more precise mode is just too boring and it's not that useful for me because I would just use Google search instead. But in some other applications, the more precise model makes a lot of sense and you'll see why. So in this chat GPT API, you can select what kind of temperature you want. So in this particular case, it says temperature zero. But if you want the model to be more creative, just bump it up to 0.7 or even higher. I'm not sure how high you can actually go. They didn't go into that in the course. But I think this was something that maybe is common knowledge to people who work with these models a lot, but it was the first time I saw it. And the last section is the chatbot section. And this is probably the part that's most useful for developers because it tells you how to integrate the ChatGPT API into your own application. So uh, I think this uh, uh, schematic on the right is the most important thing in this section. And it kind of sets up how you should think about how to use ChatGPT. So in this case, you have a user, so that would be a customer. Assistant is a chat GPT, and system is something that you bake into the into um, your application. When you use the web interface with chat GPT, you don't see the system uh, prompt, but there might be something in there. So system prompt might be something like you tell you to act very politely, or you can be more informal and things like that. And probably the best way to explain this is on an example. So they wanted to use uh, chat GPT to build a custom pizza ordering uh, bot. So what you can do in the system prompt, you give uh, ChatGPT the entire menu of the restaurant. So here's the entire menu. And then you tell, and also in the system prompt, ask the customer what they would like to order. Then the user comes in and their prompt is, I would like to order a pizza. And they don't have to paste in the menu. So you paste the menu as part of the system prompt, and then the user just uh, asks what they want to order. And then the assistant 
which is ChatGPT, uses a combination of what the user prompt was and what you give it in the system prompt to uh, generate the conversation. So it can go and ask like, what kind of pizza do you want? So ChatGPT can go into the restaurant menu that you gave it in the system prompt, and you can see you have pepperoni pizza, cheese pizza, and eggplant pizza. And then you can interact with the customer. And in the end, uh, in the system prompt, you can also tell uh, once the order has been finalized, uh, the user decided what they want to order, you can export what they ordered in a particular format. So you can build all these prompts on the system side so the customer doesn't have to see that. One very important thing to keep in mind is that each conversation with ChatGPT is a standalone interaction. So you have to provide all relevant information in the current conversation. So if you wanted to look into the menu to see what to order, you have to give it in that particular conversation. But uh, as you interact with the customer and the customer comes back next week, you can kind of tag along uh, all the interactions that happened before. So let's say I'm customer 100 and I log in next time. In this particular conversation, you load in the system from the entire menu. So ChatGPT knows what menu to uh, work with, but it can also add that previous orders of these customers were one uh, pepperoni pizza. And it can ask the user, would you like to order the same thing to kind of speed up the interaction? So that's really powerful. And to build this without ChatGPT to kind of hard code the menu into a website would take a lot of time. And if you want to uh, change the menu in the future, it would have to hard code it again. So let's say cheese pizza costs $10 this week and next week it goes to $12 you would get, have to go in and uh, change it uh, pretty laboriously or if you want to add another type of pizza. But here you just change the menu, which is uh, super easy. It's like a Word document. And then you can easily roll out this change. So that's a whole course. As I said, you can go through this really quickly. But if you are really having time, you can play around with the Jupyter Notebooks quite a bit. And you can change the temperature. You can see how it responds. You can really learn and get a good feel of what, Chat, what ChatGPT is doing. So I would really, really highly recommend this course. If you're a developer thinking about integrating ChatGPT, I think this is a wonderful way to spend your time. You're going to get a lot of value out of this and definitely highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.